Can you tell whether this sizzling burger is beef? How about these? Or this chicken? Or any of these sandwich meats? No, it's actually really hard. Oh, oh, now I'm confused. I don't know. Maybe that's the beef. <laughs> They're all the same. But it is f***ing hard. That like, it's f***ing hard, man. Yep, we're talking about fake meats. Plant-based meat alternatives, to be exact. The companies producing them say they are going to replace meat entirely. But they've also been slammed for being just as junky, ultra-processed, or just a bad rip-off of real meat. So what's the deal with all of these? Are they actually better for my body and better for the planet? I'm on my way to my favorite section of the supermarket. The vegan and vegetarian meat aisle. Burgers, nuggets, sausages, you name it. All meat-free. I've basically stopped eating meat a few years ago, and ever since then I've been trying out a lot of meat alternatives. And people around the world are doing the same. Sieht schon ein bisschen aus wie Fleisch. Wolle muy bien. Very dry. <clears throat> I don't like it. Okay, it's very yum, whatever it it's is, nice. but it's not chicken. Now, meat alternatives are not new, but this recent generation of extremely meat-like substitutes arguably originated in the US with pioneers like Beyond Meat. But before all of these high-tech innovations, different cultures have had their own meat alternatives for centuries because it was cheaper or for religious reasons. A lot of which, I'm sad to say, has been bastardized in the West into dry, brown blandness or into something like this. Not necessarily the most appetizing food and definitely a far cry from real meat. But they were the only meat substitutes available on the market for a long time. Then came the veggie burgers. Patties made out of vegetables that tasted like vegetables, so they were not designed to mimic the taste of meat. The new generation of fake meats revolutionized the market by trying to appeal to meat eaters. We're going after actually those who uh, crave meat, those who uh, can't get away from the taste of meat. This is Craig Davis, tasked with expanding impossible foods into the European market. The, the mission of Im Impossible Foods is actually to displace uh, animal, uh, animal products from the human uh, food chain. We'd like to create new options. The market value of plant-based meat worldwide was estimated to be worth around $11 billion in 2019. And it's tipped to almost triple that over the next five years, with the biggest growth expected in the Asia-Pacific region, with Western companies branching out globally and local brands popping up worldwide. So how do plants become this much like meat? Well, it's hard to get details from the manufacturers. A lot of the information is proprietary. Made out of soy, peas, soy and wheat. But most products start with concentrated or isolated soy, pea or wheat protein. The manufacturers then probably use extrusion. The ingredients are mixed, kneaded and rapidly heated under pressure. That's also how corn becomes cornflakes. The products on the market also have oils added in, for example, from sunflowers or coconuts, as well as added minerals, spices, colorants and binders. Impossible Burger has one ingredient that the others don't have, heme, a plant-based chemical compound that makes the burger bleed. On the other hand, some companies have set their sights on replacing chicken instead of beef, for example, like meat. What we want to do is we want to have ingredients which are kitchen recognizable ingredients and we want to have a process which is a natural process uh, without any chem chemical part of it. Kees Kreitov leads Live Kindly, which includes the brand Like Meat. Plant-based chicken uh, looks like, feels like and tastes like chicken. Let's put that to the test. So, as you can see, I bought a bunch of vegan meat alternatives and I'm going to test whether they're as good as the manufacturers say they are. I invited three meat eaters for a taste test. Let's see whether they can taste the difference. Because I don't think so. Let's get cooking. Mm. 
Test number one, the classic burger. Texture-wise, it gives it a little bit more bounce than meat usually would. It's definitely not the real meat burger. It tastes good, but it tastes more like, a, like vegetables. That is what I expect a burger to taste like. Really? I think that was the meat. The consistency is not, it's not right. Mm. Oh no, now I don't know. I really don't know now. Maybe that's the meat. <laughs> I think that's the real meat. <laughs> Damn, but it's harder than I thought, man. Number two, grilled chicken. It's not chicken. It's tasty, but it isn't meat. Mm. No, it's actually really hard. Artificial smelling. I think they nailed the texture a bit better. And so far I would say the second one is the chicken. That's chicken. That's chicken, for sure. Sorry guys, that's the chicken. It's just a too familiar taste. So third one is the chicken, the other two are vegan. All right. Mm. Test number three, sausage meat. Mm. I already know I'm not gonna get this one. No smell. Weird. I think this is a, this is a, the meat. The other one felt more realistic. This one just feels like has no integrity. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Either this isn't the sausage or it's a really bad sausage. There's really no way to tell. Mm -hmm. Texturally very similar to the first one. Like the differences are marginal. I think the first two were vegan. And I think this is real. Wrong! No way! That's me. Wow. Wow. <laughs> but it is f***ing hard. Like, it's f***ing so hard, man. Hard. But taste isn't the only reason these products are flying off the shelves. It's because they taste similar while supposedly being so much better for the planet. So is that actually true? Impossible Foods claims its burger has 89% less global warming potential, uses 96% less land and 87% less water than a conventional beef burger. Plant-based substitutes do have substantially lower environmental footprints than conventional farmed beef. This is Rachel Santo. She studied the environmental and health effects of different plant-based meats. But she says... Plant-based substitutes have a slightly higher impact than the... Um, the non-processed plant foods that you're comparing to. If you look at chicken, the results are less pronounced, but still quite clear. Rachel Santos' meta-study shows that on average, meat substitutes emit 43% less greenhouse gases, use 77% less land, and 76% less water compared to chicken. But that's not all the producers are claiming. What if burgers got healthier and the food we love had no cholesterol? There's no difference in, in protein. There's not much difference in other uh, components such as total fat. This is Joao Ferreira. He's a researcher and doctor who conducted a study on the health effects of meat alternatives. But one important difference is that plant-based meat has less cholesterol. So it has a little bit more salt more sodium, but the studies that have been conducted this far show that there is no increase in blood pressure or whatsoever, and these quantities of salt are small. A recent Stanford study made participants eat plant-based burgers for eight weeks instead of meat burgers, which led to better cardiovascular health. It seems that they are healthier, however, we need more studies. The nutritional value of chicken substitutes also can be similar or even better than the real thing. But this can actually vary wildly depending on which product you look at, meaning you do need to read the fine print to make sure your substitute is healthier. One chicken substitute had almost one and a half times the calories and nearly three times more fat than the meat it is trying to replace. But one thing's for sure, meat can contain antibiotics. Alternatives don't. There's been one more controversial point, and that is how processed these products are and whether that makes them unhealthy. Studies show that eating processed meat can be linked to cancer, heart disease or diabetes. Further research is needed, but initial studies show this doesn't seem to apply as directly to plant-based alternatives. 
So if you compare plant-based burgers to beef burgers directly, these are healthier. But that doesn't make vegan burgers a health food. They're still high in fat, and the fact that you'd usually eat them with sugary sauces and fries on the side doesn't make them any healthier. And yes, eating whole grains and unprocessed legumes is better for you and better for the planet, no question. But on the other hand, if you really want a burger and you have the choice, why not take the one that is better for the planet? And same goes for all of these other products. Although the taste might not completely fool us yet. Pretty close, pretty close. It's delicious. Any replaced meat is a win for the environment. What are your thoughts on plant-based meat alternatives? Have you tried any? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe.